Okay, Hans Limberson here. I wanted to do a quick video showing the state of my machine before I put the last little finishing touches on. Well, no, before I make it go live, rather. Before, I haven't yet added the program counter. Uh, the data inputs for jumping to addresses will come from those, and it will control these address lines in the program memory. So that's, that's what the program counter will do once it's installed. I have, haven't figured out, it, haven't decided exactly where to put it, but eh, I'll figure out a space. You may also have been wondering about those giant floating letters. Uh, F-A-B-O. That's for function, A input, B input, and output. Those are the uh, groups of four bits that make up my 16-bit function, my 16-bit, uh, not function code, instruction, instruction set, 16-bit instruction set. Four bits control the function, four bits for A, B, and output. And it, that should work out pretty well. 16, restricting myself to 16 functions can be a little bit annoying, but it's not too bad. Uh, and I probably could have actually made this computer without any problems just using three bits of address for A and B. The Except there was one thing that I really liked about uh, having four bits each. It's that four plus four is eight. And so I can use use these to deliver eight bit inputs. Eight uh, when I yeah, lo load a value or yeah, lo when I load a constant from the program. I, it's just 8 bits for an 8-bit computer. So that, that works pretty nicely. But it means that my function code had to get shrunk to just 4 bits, and I have extra room. Like, I'm probably only going to be using in my programs up to this much uh, of the red CPU registers I have. Those will be replaced with something else. Something that, pr probably devices, which will have inputs and outputs, and like I could set up a keyboard, and if I want to say, and if I want to do read, do a command of read from keyboard, I could just say read from register, uh, read from address 12, and if the keyboard is hooked up to address 12, then I'll be reading from the keyboard. But from the CPU's perspective, it's just as if it were regular memory, it, just another CPU register. So that that's known as memory mapped I.O. or memory mapped input output, where the inputs and outputs in the CPU are treated just as if they were just regular registers, except their value inexplicably changes due to external control. So yeah, that's what I have there. Uh, I also wanted to show off this decoder. Uh, one of the challenges of making a decoder is you want it to be narrow because you don't want to waste space. But at the same time, I also needed to give an output every single lot or e every every other block, which that's that's a bit challenging it in itself. Uh, this is a good design of decoder for uh, one every line. It was made by a member of the RDF called Grimmel Car, and I modified it a bit. Basically, wh where there's a block, the repeater will make the wire turn on. If you so that's that will code for a zero. If you want a one, you just replace the block with a torch, and it works pretty simply. It's a nice it's a nice decoder. The problem is you need three blocks of width per unit, and I. Despite the fact that I do actually have ample space that direction, I just wanted to test out a different design. If you're willing to accept an output every four blocks, like I was with uh, with my registers there, then you can very easily make a make a decoder that's just two two blocks wide, repeats every two blocks. So I did that, and then I realized, wait. So if, if I do that, 
all I need to do to make it every uh, to make an output every two is to just split split the wire and then control which half of the wire gets forced on which one you leave off. So if I do that, you can see the the second line here is off and the offness goes to here, goes down that branch. And flipping that, the offness now goes down the right or the left branch. So, yeah, with these various addresses, they will select, or with these various, yeah, I put in binary values here, and it selects a corresponding line on the program memory. The torches light up, send data down the wires, and the, and the control information goes to the CPU. It figures out what to do with it and does the right thing, hopefully. If it doesn't do the right thing, then it's broken. I don't want it to be broken. So yeah, I'm going to go install the program counter soon, and and hopefully, if everything goes well, my CPU will go live. It will become alive. It will start doing things automatically on its own. Craziness. Well, that's what it's supposed to be doing. And then once it's alive, I'll work on creating an actual user interface. Because, I don't know, it might be useful to be able to use the computer. Maybe. Okay, Hans Lemerson, signing out.